Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and we're back with more Conquest stuff, and funny enough, we're back with Hundred Kingdoms stuff. Now, I've said many times on this channel, number one, not a fan of human models, usually, and number two, definitely not a fan of cavalry models. One of the reasons being that I feel like cavalry models, you're doing twice the work for half of the effectiveness in a game, so to speak, you know? Yeah, cavalry's usually really good in most games, but... You gotta paint the horses or the mounts or whatever they're on, plus the figures. And in my experience, uh, coming from you know playing lizard men for a long time, uh, it just felt like they they didn't live up to their potential. But then I saw these guys, and I'll admit I have really enjoyed almost every cavalry unit that we've seen with Parabellum's Conquest lineup. But the Order of the Ash and Dawn just take it to ridiculous extremes. You've got this guy with like a death mask face here, and they're all just wielding big, ungainly clubs, which I really like. But they're just blinged out like there is no tomorrow. Like we're playing Fashion Souls here. I mean, look at these guys. They mean business. There's going to be a lot of gold paint on these by the time I'm done with them. Because I'm lazy and I don't like doing the non-metallic metal. And I probably could if I really wanted to try. But I don't. Get a little bit better view on the back here. They've got really big, heavy cloaks. One of the things I noticed is that the horses... And I saw somebody mention it online, are absolutely monstrous. Um, we're talking like these can be, were they the Varengard guys? Whatever uh, Archaeon's special ever-chosen cavalry are supposed to be. These would be a great candidate. Paint up in Slaaneshi colors or something. We got our usual 50-ish millimeter bases stands for said bases that I guess are hidden underneath. Bunch of sprues, and these are heavy sprues by the way. Three command cards. Hmm. That's interesting. Ah, uh, okay. The reason you have three command cards, because that's not normal. Usually you have one unit and they're all chewed up, which isn't cool, but you have one unit, you get one card. The reason you have three cards here is because it says there are three command cards to allow for each of the order to act as characters in First Blood, the skirmish small-scale mode of Conquest. All right, taking a look at the directions, they look quite involved. And it oh, oh, is nice to see that we do actually have some alternative choices. So you can build the rider with the big bastard sword flambirds looking thing, or some nice spiky maces. Some kind of an alternative head. The guy swinging the mace over here also has an alternative head. Doesn't look like he has a choice in weapons, that's okay. And then the rider with the standard has some options as well. Same weapon, but it looks like he can either carry the club on his shoulder, and then with the standard, or it looks like he might have an option without, and then some interesting faces going on there. In the end, though, you are definitely going to have three specific poses for your cavalry and then three specific riders. I don't think we're going to be able to mix and match. I'm going to try. I mean, might as well, right? But I think that's how it's going to work out. I have a feeling that each of these sprues is probably going to be unique just due to the sheer size. Now, first of all, look at the size of that blade. This is a big weapon and this dude's wielding it with one hand and I know that they have some kind of like spiritual hocus pocus magic thing blood of giants not not as much of the blood of giants going on like the Nords the Vikings and monsters faction of conquest and I'm looking for my usual inquisitor guy and I don't know where I put him I just saw him too come on there you are 
Your blade is one inquisitor tall. Then again, so are these maces. Jeez. So like I said, you want some kind of really crazy exalted chaos knights? Look at the just the, the detail and the flamboyance of those capes. I'm not sure if that's barding or I think it's barding. I don't know if that's a cape, cloak, whatever you want to call it. The skulls all over. I mean, I, why not throw that in a Warhammer game? I think they're going to be way too big for any kind of like Cities of Sigmar type stuff. But, you know, this stuff's like almost ogre-sized. Maybe if you wanted to bling up a nice unit of ogre mercs, or even use them as ogre cavalry. Hmm, that's an idea. Count them as like Mornfang for like a Cities of Sigmar type unit. I know that's not a fair, legit army composition, but that's okay. I love these kind of Japanese-inspired carnival clubs here. Come on, look at these skull heads. That heavy armor. I mean, this is just going to be like a painter's dream. Or nightmare, <laughs> depending on how you feel about having to paint all this stuff. Spurt armor for the riders. So yeah, like I said, these are all individual, and then this brew is made up mostly of horsies. Who seem to be just as equally armored. I would suggest if you are a wise person and you are a meticulous painter type, you might want to just put the halves of the horses together before and paint them before attaching all the extra bits because it looks like it's going to get really heavy really fast and really hard to get in those little crevices afterwards. Those are some interesting face plates for the horses. There's nothing underneath either. Armored from top to bottom. So I mean these these things look like they're going to mean business. I think I had started rambling on about one point about uh, contact points. I was going to say that, but, so I didn't, but now I am. Uh, I noticed that some of these horses had a very precarious balance with like maybe only one or two hooves attached to the base. And that's a big sticking point for me is that I like to have enough of a contact point. I mean, these are game pieces. Let's be honest with ourselves. These are toys for games. Yes, they can become works of art. Maybe not much so much, but they can, hypothetically. But, you know, they're, they're meant to be used. They're meant to be played with. They're meant to be played in games with. And when I have a figure that has only one tiny point of contact with said base to keep its balance, to keep itself in one piece, that always worries me. Yes, I can pin it. I know. I have done many times. You know how many Kingdom Death figures I've got on this channel and I am getting backlogged on. But that's beside the point. I feel like if we're going to have big honking models like this, I hope that they're going to have a nice way to keep themselves upright without having to resort to me drilling and nailing them onto a base because that's probably what's going to happen. They just look really huge. But, okay, maybe those reservations of mine are, you know, premature. Maybe I'm just jumping the gun here, but I'm going to get these built and we'll see if my reservations turn out to be true or not and we'll grab some other mounted models just to let these guys show off as well so sit tight all right folks it is with no exaggeration that i say the order of the ash and dawn are absolute monsters i mean i am i'm not kidding i'm truly not kidding let's take our our nice Gripping Beast, uh, Byzantine Cataphract. No, it wasn't Byzantine. It was a late Roman. Anyway, Cataphract model here. Traditional 28 millimeter size. And then, there, <laughs> then there's the Order of the Ash and Dawn. I mean, this poor horse is going to get literally stomped. These guys are just beasts of models. I am absolutely enthralled with them. I mean, they are just... Here, here we've got our poor Varengard who, for the longest time, I thought were like the creme de la creme when it came to tabletop cavalry models. You know, he's arching up, you know, ready to gallop forward, 
lop a bunch of heads off, whatever, do his thing. But let's let's get one of the even rearing up his horse barely barely makes it up to the ash and dawn mount. And one thing, I'm not even 100% sure this is actually his mount. I'm pretty sure it is. But I don't think it actually really matters. There's no real... I mean, he fits. There's no real necessity for uh, which horse seems to go on... Or which rider goes on which horse. Obviously, they fit better on the ones they are designated for. I don't have the standard on the screen yet. You'll notice all of mine are carrying clubs. I ended up ditching the sword for yet another big spiky mace. I've, I've always liked maces. It's just a different look, I think. Even the... Household, guard, knights, whatever, from the original starter set, which were quite large to begin with, are absolutely getting dwarfed by these guys. They're going to mean business. And I'm actually kind of happy to see that they do have individual cards, because these guys, the three of them just stomping through the field, is going to be pretty impressive, I feel. Grabbing another of the very few painted... Cavalry models I have from Conquest, one of the Centaur Avatara for the Spires, which were quite large models, you can see here. I mean, they're still going to put up a big fight, I think, in terms of size with these guys. These guys are just absolute brutes, and I am absolutely here for it. I think if you're going to be a stickler for size, yeah, there's definitely going to be some issues there. I mean, even like the Priory Commander who unfortunately I don't have the right base for. And unfortunately, I did not bother to paint yet, and I thought he was a bit of a beast on his horse. You can see there's still going to be some big difference in size. So I think these guys are going to look great painted up. Lots of silver, lots of gold. Lots of ceramic face masks, death masks, what have you. And there's just a lot of fun detail here. There are a few optional parts for the various riders, and I want to say you can build the standard in a couple of different ways with the club down and without a standard, I believe. I know there was a separate hand there, and there are a couple of optional heads, like I said. So if you wanted to have a couple units of these, it's totally doable, I think. And there might have been, I think this guy's arm is the only exception. Before you started getting into, obviously, converting them and swiping hands and stuff like that around... I think if you went that route, you're definitely going to have a lot of options. But I think the three of them just pounding forward on the table are going to look quite impressive. And again, I may not be the biggest fan of cavalry. You know, like I said, uh, it's a lot of work for a lot of times not much payoff. But these guys, I think, as individual units, you want to throw them in another game, I think they're going to look quite majestic. I keep thinking Conquest models are great for games of Gods and Mortals from Osprey as well. Uh, just due to the large size of these figures, if you want larger-than-life heroes, I think this is a great set. Each of these, you know, can be their own dude in First Blood, and there's nothing stopping you from doing the exact same thing in a other fantasy-oriented tabletop games, if you don't mind having big, giant models. I mean, they're going to have presence. <laughs> I would also suggest, like I said earlier, pinning them to the bases, uh, besides gluing them, obviously. I have just a tiny bit of blue tack on here, and unfortunately my daughter took it, and I don't know where she put it, and that's all I have left. So they're balanced very precariously at the moment. I'm going to get these guys started up. Hopefully we're going to see them painted on this channel soon. And knowing that we have even more big cavalry coming from, like, the Wadroon have the new Stegosaur, not Stegosaurus, Triceratops cavalry coming as well. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff. So definitely keep an eye on the channel. We'll have more of these as they come out. And I am absolutely looking forward to getting them painted and showing them off. Because these are going to be, like, my gold star standard for absolutely ludicrous, giant, imposing cavalry here on out. So with that said, then... 
This has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures, saying thanks for watching, and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye.